Alright, in this video, we're going to go a little bit more in depth talking about what we call a CSS uh, class. In the previous videos, when we got started with just working with CSS, I showed you how to link the document, the external CSS document, to your HTML document. And then we looked at just setting main CSS files here. But more specifically, it was with the heading tag, if you remember, we just targeted all heading tags anytime that we apply it. So for instance, like if I change the text here to Cambria, you see how both of these headings are affected. Honestly, from a design standpoint, that's, that's fine. But what if you only wanted to affect, like let's say this paragraph right here that whatever's in this paragraph is super important and we want to make sure that the user sees it, it's emphasized and stands up from the other paragraphs. The thing is though, from the workflow standpoint, I only want this paragraph here to be affected. I don't want what I'm about to do to this paragraph to affect these other two paragraphs on the web page. This is where setting up a class selector comes into play. So this is going to take us back over to this CSS designer. Now, a couple of things to note in your UI that you know you're ready to start kind of laying this out here as far as your rules are concerned. First off, under the all sources, you should see main.css here. And also remember up on the top under the tab here, if you see main CSS next to the source code button, that means that's linked to this HTML document here. Now, I've highlighted the text that I want to affect. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to come over to the selector and I'm going to hit the little plus symbol. Now you're going to see this little, this will change depending on what you have highlighted or selected. That's actually the HTML uh, tags that are popping up for you there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a class called important. Now, when you define a class in Dreamweaver though, under the selectors, we need to add a dot in front of it. That's just the style of writing it. So just trust me that whenever you want to make something that is applicable to individual elements, you put the dot in front of it or the period. And I'll go ahead and say enter. Okay, great. So now this is defined as a selector, but let's go down and check out the properties here. The properties elements by default, you may actually only see something like this window here with the sets. Go ahead and uncheck show set so we can start with some of our basic options here. So up at the top here, you have layout, you have your text, you have some borders, background, and then you can also have more. So let's hop over to text. So as I said, I want this to be kind of important. So maybe I change the color to a red to get people's attention. Uh, let's make this maybe impact and Let's maybe center it. So I have this whole declaration going on here and you can actually see we have a lot of different options too, just going down the whole entire list here. We'll get into more of those as we work through the CSS, but for right now, we'll just edit this text here. So let's go ahead and unmagnify. And you can see we've now made this important class, but if you notice, nothing's changed here. That's because we need to now apply it. We used the selection to choose how we want it to be recorded, but now we need to come down to the properties panel under CSS, and I'll go ahead and zoom in again. And under the targeted rule here, notice the word importance now popping up there. So now I can actually apply that class and let's zoom out and see what it did. And you can actually, before I do that, notice there's that impact and that color popping up. Also the ordering there as far as the text align. 
and voila, you see now that it's actually set our text accordingly. Now, why is this so powerful? Well, for one thing, notice it's not affecting the other paragraphs here. But also, now that I've made this class, I can come into other areas and maybe I don't s select the entire paragraph, but instead I only want a couple of words selected. So I can come down to the target rule, say important, and you see how it's only affecting those words there and leaving the rest of the paragraph alone. That's kind of one of the big powers there. So yes, while CSS from an external document standpoint can make our lives really easy as far as making definitions and kind of controlling all the elements, there are some times that you want to actually just only control specific elements. So that's one thing that you're going to have to get into the habit of is if you want to have specific elements, you're going to need to actually highlight and come over to the selector and choose your selector. Now, it's okay too if you just want to leave it as the HTML tags. That's perfectly viable as well, that I could come in for instance, I can make a whole new declaration that is then affected by the new design. So these are some things, oh, let me go back to body H1, there we go. So these are some things to take into consideration. I'd honestly encourage you, if you're going to start out with CSS, make that external document, highlight, add your selector, either just leave it as is or add that dot in front of it we can have as many classes as we like. So I could have important, I could have general paragraph, general header, general image, so on and so forth. I can have as many of those as I want and I can use them as many times as I want to in an HTML document. And just so you can see in case anybody's interested, if I come over now, you can see here before, we only had a couple of items popping up here in the CSS document. If you remember, we only had this line one appearing here. But notice now there's that important that we declared. It wrote all of the code for us. And there's that new H1 that's affecting the H1s on the page as well. So using the selector and then the property panel, making sure we turn off that show set, can give us a lot more power and control over working with CSS. Again, last but by no means least, we worked with the actual HTML tags in class settings in this video. In a later video, I will talk to you about one other type of selector, which is the ID. That gets more into CSS structure and layout of web pages though. So for right now, I would encourage folks practice with these two pieces uh, and get comfortable with going between your CSS designer window, setting that CSS file, and then coming down and being able to select that rule that you just created under the selectors and applying it to your web page.